Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm in EFC. This is Blue Lions TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys a predicted lineup 11 and preview for our upcoming game this Sunday against Man United in the FA Cup semi final. Now, in particular this season, United have proven to be our biggest bogey team. We're about to play them four times and already we've lost three games against them. Now, I'm going to briefly break down why we lost each game against them, starting with the recent 2 0 loss. In that game in particular, Marshall scored from a header, overpowering Christensen, and for the second, goal that was a Harry Maguire set piece from a corner. In that game in particular that was particularly frustrating because we scored two goals, a Kurt Zuma header and a Giroud goal which were both disallowed so we had absolutely zero luck in that game and all our hard work paid off for nothing. We move on to the second loss against them and that was the 2-1 defeat where Michi Batshuayi got that goal. We lost that goal again due to set pieces, one coming from a Rashford penalty and the other coming from probably one of the best free kicks scored in this season of football. And for the first loss against them, that was the 4-0 humbling defeat where we were the better team, we controlled that game. However, as has been the case our entire season, we defeated ourselves, we were terrible defending against the counter-attack and it was easy pickings for an experienced Man United team. Now, one thing we shared in particular in every single game was that we absolutely dominated possession. We had around 57% to 62% of possession throughout those entire three games. And what costs us in the end is us making our own mistakes. And this is my worry for that game against Man United. When it comes to the actual game plan, I feel confident. But as has been the case this entire season, is how well can the team playing on the day execute the system that Lampard's worked on? Because there's no way Lampard expected any of those mistakes to come. We've lost time and time again to Man United's experience. We've lost from set pieces and corners and headers and terrible mistakes and counter-attacks that we shouldn't be giving away in the first place. But now, now we have the opportunity to make it four times lucky. Hopefully we've learned enough as the season's gone on and hopefully the team does feel confident knowing that they can take the game to Man United. But now for this FA Cup semi-final, this has to be the game where no mistakes are made and we aren't defeating ourselves as we've tended to do. United's experience in their physicality has paid off time and time again. They've counter-attacked and it's been very easy for them because they know how to exploit us and exploit our weaknesses. So based on that importance of winning on Sunday, Maybe Lampard could get some inspiration from that recent win against Man City where we played against them the first time, absolutely dominated possession, being the first team to do so against the pet team to get nothing from that game, only to play the second game using a completely different set of tactics to win that game quite deservedly right in the end. So against Man United, what is Lampard going to be thinking about in particular? What formations, what lineups, what is Lampard thinking to rectify all the losses against Man United this season? Because... I feel like we can't make it four losses in a row against this Man United team. Right now, United are looking quite potent. Their front three in Greenwood, Marshall and Rashford, they've been absolutely dominating against the bottom half teams in the table. So now you guys, now is an opportunity to prove how much we've learned, how far we've come, and hopefully with this advantage of having an extra 48 hours to prepare compared to Man United, who recently played against Crystal Palace yesterday, hopefully Lampard and the team are fully ready and prepared for the game on Sunday. We now move on to the press conference, where I'm going to focus on the main things that Lampard spoke about and the most important things that I think you guys would care to. Lampard mentioned that he's excited for the fans to return back to Sanford Bridge after Boris Johnson recently announced that we could see fans returning back to stadiums sometime in October. So, personally, I don't know how to feel about that. You know, in my head, I'm still thinking that there could be there could be a second wave. You know, I, I don't trust people too much. I'm already seeing some nonsense happening already. So, let's see what happens on that front. We do move on. And to continue the tour, the big news we all hoped for was Kante returning back for this game. No surprise that when he played as our DM against Man City, he gave us that extra pretension that our defence really needs and this is one of the main reasons why we got that win against them. Unfortunately, it seems that Kansi is not going to be fully fit enough on Sunday. Now, part of me feels like, okay, could this be Lampard bluffing to surprise Man United? But another part of me also thinks that this is the same situation Kansi has been in time and time again over this past 18 months. Lampard and Sari constantly rush him back every single time, only for him to pick up further injuries. So I'd rather Kante comes back fully fit, but it is quite disappointing. And, uh, you know, one player in particular who should be very lucky and very happy is Bruno Fernandes, because if he was up against Kante in that role, phew, good lord, he wouldn't have a single chance whatsoever, you guys. 
Lampard did mention that he is wary of the front three that United have. As I said, they've been steamrolling the bottom half teams in the table. Talks then moved on to Ziyech's arrival with Lampard saying that his integration in the team is very good right now and he just needs a lot of time to work on his physicality to get back to full speed. And to end things with the interesting point made in the press conference, that was Lampard speaking about summer investments in particular from Roman Abramovich and I thought that Lampard's answer was quite telling. It was quite interesting and quite insightful. I'm going to tell you guys exactly why. When asked about Roman plan to spend big in the summer, Lampard said that we'll see how he feels and how we'll feel as a club and the reason why I like this answer is because this really heavily implies that Lampard has the first say. He has the control to dictate the type of targets we look at, the type of positions we need to fill. Once he has the first word, things are move on to the second phase where he then liaises with your marinas, your pet checks, etc, etc. And I think this is one of the main reasons why we've been so great in the window. You know, signing your Kovacic's, signing your Pulisic's, uh, signing your Ziyech's, signing your Werner's too, and you know, signing other players too who are soon to come as well you guys I feel this is the best environment for success and chances we've had for a very long time and these results are becoming evidently tangible as the days keep on coming and now we move on to the predicted lineup part for today's video I'm going to focus on two different formations starting with the first one and that's using a 4-3-3 now I do want to say this in particular that with certain selections I pick they're not based on playing the best possible 11 because I think in football, you guys, we have to be a bit more nuanced with how we see the team and how we see lineups. It's, you know, we do have a lot of difficult games to come and we have to think about the best possible tactics we could use to get that win against Man United. So for my 4-3-3, I have Giroud playing up front because I feel like maybe his physical presence could be useful against Man United, especially now that we're using a system that involves midfield runners from deep. So Giroud's ability to maintain the ball because, you know, we can't forget Giroud is like 6-3, 6-4. Look how massive his guns are. Look how big he is. Look how big his upper body is. It's no surprise that Giroud is going to overpower most players in this league compared to Tammy Abraham. Let's not forget that Giroud has 11 years on top of Tammy and you can see that physically. So I think that him against Maguire and Lindelof could be a very good and competitive battle. Of course, it has to be Willian and Pulisic. That is just a dead certain at this point in time. In midfield though, I've gone for the most balanced mid we have at this point in time. I feel like Jorginho could be a really risk at this point in time because teams are evidently targeting him time and time again and as we saw in the first game against Man United there are mistakes in him and we know that your United attack is going to definitely target him so I've gone for Kovacic, Mason Mount and Ross Barkley. I did want to use Loftus Cheek but a part of me feels like I have to be realistic about the player's development and his rehab when it comes to just getting back to playing you know proper football because you know his strength and his power could be very useful against that strong United midfield. And of course the back four Aspie down the left, Rudiger and Zuma, Reese James and Keperun goal. I feel like this team on its day could definitely beat them. They beat Man City, they beat Liverpool, they beat Everton, they beat very good teams so I think that this team definitely has some potential. And for the second formation, I've gone for a 3-4-3. Now, as I stressed at the start, sometimes we have to think about the tactics and the game plan over 90 minutes. I'm saying this because I know how some people react when I don't have their favourite player on the team. It doesn't mean that they're not rated. As I said, football isn't a simple game where you just only exclusively play your strongest 11 every single possible time. For the 3-4-3, I've gone for Jura up front, I've gone for Mason Mount and Willian playing as those attacking mids and behinds. In midfield, I've gone for Mateo Kovacic and Jorginho with Marcus Alonso and Rhys James playing as wingbacks. And in defence, I've gone for Aspilicueta, Kurt Zuma and Rudiger too because, you know, I'm still having those flashbacks of Christensen's lack of aerial dominance against them. And the last thing we need to give away is headed opportunities, set pieces, etc, etc. My reason for this is that tactically, we get to have as many midfield players as possible. With Willie and Mason Mount, they work very hard, they press very hard and they have the ability to hold the ball which is quite important. I think that Pulisic is a very direct player and if we were to start using a 3-4-3, maybe Pulisic's involvement would be best coming on in the second half where the game is more open and his direct style of play could really heavily influence any possible win because remember this is an FA Cup game it means that it could go into extra time anything can happen and these are the type of tactics and details and nuance that we have to consider. Still one of my main reasons for this is because if Jorginho was forced to play he needs some protection alongside him he needs some support 
support. And if you have guys who are very heavily involved in the defensive phase and you're Mason Mounts and Williams alongside them and, you know, your Kovacic as well, I feel like maybe we could counterbalance that lack of physical anything that Jorginho doesn't have in the field. So you guys, these are the two formations I could see us using. Of course, in the comment section below, if you have your own insightful thoughts and opinions, if you think there could be a smart solution to potentially get this win against Man United, make sure you let all of us know. I love to hear what you guys are thinking. What is the best way to beat this Man United team after we've lost three games against them already this season? But anyway, you guys, to give you my final score prediction, I mean, it's kind of obvious that I have to go for a win. That's that's fairly obvious. There's no way I'm going to bet against my team in a cup competition. How many times in these types of games do we show what we're really about? Do we come on fire and get the win against all odds? Let's not forget that, you guys. For me, I'm going to go for a 2-1 win. Let's hope the tactics are on point. Let's hope that Lampard's extra two days to prepare the team comes through for us and gives us that advantage. But anyway, you guys, on that point, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, I released a big video, a new daily video surrounding Kai Havertz. So you definitely would want to hear what I said about that. And on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. I mean EFC, the Sisbury Lions TV. Come on, Chelsea. Let's get this win on Sunday and hopefully book our place in this FA Cup final. I'll see you guys then.